everyone. Welcome to my video. I wanted to do something a little more casual, face to face, and I thought a get unready with me video would be a great type of video. I really liked my makeup today, so I'm sad that I will need to remove it. Um, and it's kind of daunting to remove my makeup and post a video, like, really bare-skinned, but I usually post vlogs um, without any makeup in them when I do end up posting vlogs, which is infrequent. Um, so I don't know why I would be nervous right now. I don't know. I think it's, it's more of like my ASMR content and I tend to not show my face purely for preference. Um, but I, everyone, I don't think anyone really cares that much. <laughs> um, so welcome. I am Stacy. That is my real name, yes. And I wanted to get unready and chat about some books a little bit because I've been reading and wanted to share a little bit about what I have on my bookshelf right now. And I have my strawberry uh, old navy pajama top, which makes me feel so happy. So I decided to wear it. Um, so yeah. If you are also winding down for the evening or, or just need a casual vibe to slowly drift off to or relax to, hopefully this helps. I live in a one bedroom like apartment and it's not very um, quiet. I'm not really in the city, but for where we are, we are located sort of near a busy street, so I often have to cut and edit my videos to accommodate for the outside noises. Um, so sometimes that's an air conditioning humming in the background or whatnot. Uh, I do my best to cut those out. Like I said, I really liked my makeup today and my hair, but it's definitely like my hair is flat now. Um, I did this like slick back, the front piece. I did use primer today for my makeup, but it's definitely worn down. It's been like 10 plus hours and I'm actually surprised at how well it's held up. So, usually I wash my face in the shower. Um, I will not be doing that today. I um, use like a melting balm from e.l.f. and then I do a cleanser. But because I wanted to chit chat and show you, you know, the process a little bit more, I have my cellar cleansing water and I'm just going to use some cotton pads to remove a majority of the makeup and then I will go wash my face and then I'll come back to you and do the rest of the um, skincare that I have which I've shown these products maybe a million times already on my channel but if you're new here you can see kind of the simple skincare night routine I do so, um, I will go ahead and jump right in. I've been chatting away already. I'm gonna just push my hair back. Ah, uh, okay. I heard somewhere that cotton pads are not always great to use on your skin. Maybe because if it can be abrasive, I try to be as gentle as possible, um, whenever I use them. And I... I have some cloth ones, but I just don't know where they are right now, so I'm using cotton pads and I'll probably use a couple just to get the majority of my makeup off. So. It's 
always sad when you have to take off a pretty outfit or makeup look that you liked. It's just, it's hard. But it has to go. Okay. So I'm just going to soak that. Starting right away, um, I was unable to post a video last week. This is, you'll probably see the following week after. This past week, I have fallen ill. It's always weird describing illness. I found like I have taken ill. I have fallen ill. I have ailments, like I don't even know how to say I'm sick without it sounding like that. I'm sick. It just sounds weird. Yeah, saying I'm sick just sounds really weird to me. <laughs> and then I had like a stomach virus situation, so it's not like I can say, oh, I have a cold, you know, um, and saying I have a stomach virus. <laughs> A stomach bug just sounds... Um, it's been fun. <laughs> it actually has not been fun. It's been really rough. <laughs> but, but I'm happy to say that I am feeling a lot better. And I am on the up and up. It has actually been forcing me to rest and like not worry about my productivity uh, because I physically wasn't able to, which was, you know, frustrating, but I was able to read a lot. Um, so I think it was overall a, you know, you know, there were silver linings to it. So, I'm gonna get around the edges. I always end up forgetting that it's around my hairline. <laughs> so, like I said, I usually don't use my cellar for my full face, but it's purely for the video. So, um, yeah, but, um, Everything else is pretty much my normal routine, and I like to make sure whatever I'm using that the makeup really is removed because that can be frustrating. Alright, we're going into the eyebrows, which I'm gonna miss. <laughs> um, so yeah, I'm doing a lot better. It was definitely a long week, but I'm glad I'm almost to the end of all of it. I forgot that I have a mirror, like right here, and I keep looking in the viewfinder, but I can't see that far away, so like I can't really tell what I'm removing, so I'm gonna look in this mirror a little bit. Removing everything. So yeah. Yeah, my diet the past week has been minimal. I think I went like a couple days without eating any food at all, really. And then I started just having like a very basic, simple, easy digestion diet to kind of help myself out. And now I feel like I've been able to eat regular meals. My appetite is really like up and down. Like, I, I don't think I've felt really, really hungry in a few days um, since before I got sick, honestly, and my appetite has just been smaller lately, so just dealing with all that has been interesting. I'm going to do the eyes next. Kind of patting my eye, not trying to 
drag it or anything. And trying to get that mascara off, which always seems to be like the most, uh, <laughs> the most, I don't know what accent that was, the most, um, I guess difficult to really fully get off sometimes. And I'm not even wearing waterproof, which is surprising to me. Waterproof mascara is so difficult to remove. I just try to avoid it if I can. Okay, one eye is mostly done. Now I just look like a tomato. <laughs> Sorry about that. I feel like I haven't caught up with y you all in a while, it feels. So, I just wanted to chit-chat. I've been reading, which has been really nice. And... Work is work, you know? It's not too bad, it's not... I guess I kind of feel neutral about it. Um, my day job, you know? My 9 to 5, which really feels like 7 to 7, <laughs> give and take all the commuting and having to come home and make dinner. And My free time doesn't really start until like 7.30. That is a reality for all of us, for sure. Um, yeah, I feel like I've been in a weird funk in the last week. Oh, I watched the um, Bridgerton Queen Charlotte spinoff last, uh, I guess, like the week it came out, essentially, and Okay, I was starting to fall sick around this time, so it's kind of like my body was physically not in the best position to be taking on so many emotions, but when I watched Queen Charlotte, I, well, I finished it over about three days, and um, I just, it was kind of hard for me to watch first and like I kind of want to watch it again because I I just feel like I couldn't really absorb what was happening um and I think there were just things that caught me off guard that weren't really expected in the previous Bridgerton seasons and if you don't know what Bridgerton is. It's a Netflix series. It's like period piece esque, but it's got its own like flavor of, you know, elements and storytelling. Um, and I love it. I, I have rewatched the Bridgerton season one and two several times because it's like a comfort show. I don't feel like those shows are hard. Like the, the content is super light even though there's, you know, plot and will they, won't they kind of thing. Um, but I think that's because it's kind of like rom-coms in those ways. Like you're not expecting heavy content or heavy messages to deal with. And for Queen Charlotte, it was definitely a darker twist. I don't think it's, I think going back now, I could probably rewatch it, but the first run, I was like, this is really difficult for me, and it was mainly because of, like, portrayals of, I mean, I don't want to get too specific, but, um, like, Lady Danbury's marriage to her husband, and, like, the dynamic between them was really hard to watch, and then for George and uh, Charlotte, George's journey was really tough. Like, I felt so anxious every episode. Like, I felt like I couldn't enjoy the good parts because it would show me, like, a good part and then, like, a really sad or frustrating part. And it just had my emotions so up and down. And I was getting mad. I was like, this is not enjoyable. This is not the, like, content I want to re-watch. And I think it was kind of the way it was, the story was portrayed to you as the, the viewer, which I thought was clever, but going
going through the process, it was just very uncomfortable. I was very uncomfortable trying to enjoy. And then the ending was great. And I felt like it was a, for the most part, happy ending, but not, you know, it's like real life. And I felt like I had closure. I had felt like it was accepted in my personal view. Like I could accept the ending for what it was and the journeys, but not up until the very end. And then, so I feel like I need to go rewatch it and try to enjoy the good parts. And it's kind of like when I rewatch the um, season one and two, I'll actually skip some side stories because I because I just want to get to the main characters and their romance. Um, so I might do that. I might skip some of the more uncomfortable parts, specifically around like mental health stuff and certain things they portrayed. I just felt like incredibly anxious. So um, it was a wonderful season though. It was beautiful. I loved everything, but I didn't really appreciate that until and now I've come to terms with it and I feel like I can rewatch it and like feel good about it and not so, I don't know, <laughs> sorry, I just really went in on Bridgerton there, but I love Bridgerton and I really wish I had like some friends that were as obsessed with as me because I really want to try to go to those like Bridgerton balls that they have around the country because I'm just, I think that's so fun. I love period pieces. I have been an avid supporter of romantic Jane Austen-esque stuff since before I could remember. I love so much out there. It has to be on the lighter side. The dark, dark period pieces I feel like are harder for, like I just, they, I'm not as attracted to that. So yeah, I would love to experience a Bridgerton ball or something, but I love that show and I'm trying to read all the books. I'm still on book one. I've sort of set it aside for now because I wanted to read other stuff, but I'm going to go back to it and read all the other books. Um, but yeah, let me know if you like Bridgerton. I really love it. I think it's quirky. I think it's beautiful. I think everyone is so lovely and I'm sure we all have our own opinions about different things, but I just love Bridgerton so much, <laughs> and period pieces in general. Um, a big fan, big fan. So I'm gonna go wash my face now. Um, I like to use the Serafi Hydrating Cleanser. I brought my travel version to show you, but I'm gonna go use my full size in my bathroom. So I'm gonna go do that, and then we'll come back to do the rest of our skincare. All right, I'm back. The face is clean and I'm ready to apply the products. So we will go ahead and do that. Um, okay, so I am first going to do my grande lash, which is like a eyelash growth serum, and I find they it works amazing on me. So I'm just going to apply this. Yeah, I love this stuff for sure. that. Next, I'm going to do my retinol eye cream by Olay. I will probably get something different when I run out of this, but I'm not sure what it will be. <laughs> so, kind of just getting the eye stuff out of the way. So, I'm just patting that Gently, my ring finger. Um, and that 
is that. Awesome. I'm definitely still kind of red from... I guess I look... I think I just appear more red because of the tones that I have, but when I look in the mirror, it's not that red. So, I promise my skin does not feel irritated. <laughs> but, okay. I have not done my retinal treatment yet this week, so I'm gonna do my retinal serum by La Roche-Posay. It's just their retinol B3 serum. So, I'm gonna do, I'm gonna do that. Okay, and then try to get some on there. I feel like it's a little difficult <laughs> first. Okay. And then I'm just going to pat it into the skin. So, I recently was researching what order um, to put your moisturizer on versus your facial oil, and I've always done oils and serums, serums and then oils, and then a moisturizer. This is a serum, so it's going on first, and then, um, and I read that you should be putting like a proper facial oil type thing last after moisturizer. I haven't been doing that. <laughs> so now I'm like, have I been doing it wrong? I don't know. I think there were some articles that said it doesn't really matter. Um, as long as you're not like irritating your skin and mixing things you shouldn't mix, that kind of thing. But I'm going to try moisturizer and then a rosehip oil last, just to see if it makes a difference. Maybe not. I don't know. So, I'm gonna take my La Roche-Posay Double Repair Face Moisturizer. This is a brand new bottle. I almost pretty much just finished up my so I'm gonna do mm, just a little bit. Okay. And there is like a helicopter that is circling around every couple minutes and it's very frustrating. <laughs> so yeah, it's kind of difficult when I don't have like the most quiet of spaces. It's, it sounds like it's a helicopter chase or something like, I don't know, so. Okay, so I just put on the moisturizer and I'm going to do my rosehip oil, which I love and um, kind of wait for this to kind of settle in. Um, should take a couple seconds, but. I think the retinol has been pretty good so far. I haven't, I mean, it's a pretty low dosage, um, I think. Like, it's not very strong since it's over the counter. Um, and that's where I really wanted to start off with right now, and it's been really great. So, I'm gonna just do some rosehip oil last. I usually like put some on my face, but I don't want to get it on my pajamas right now. So, um, since I'm mostly looking at the camera, but never underestimate a good face massage. And I try to get the neck too. I think I forgot to put the serum on my neck, but it's fine. It's just you and me, you know? There is definitely like a helicopter chase happening. It's, there's no other explanation right now. <laughs> um, I, I just don't know. We've had a couple instances, at least twice in the last few years, where like, pe 
people being chased were by the law enforcement um, came into our neighborhood, which is gated and it's gated, but we're like not in the best area. Um, it's not a gated community and it's posh and like really strict. It's, we are in like a busy area and a city that's notorious for a lot of, ish, like, oh, it's just a lot going on. Um, and it's cheaper to live over here, hence why, um, it's just a little rougher in our area, but, um, yeah, that's been an interesting time, but, I mean, both times have been, I think, false alarms, um, but yeah, honestly, I feel like people who stumble into our neighborhood are kind of the least harmless, because our neighbor upstairs allegedly, um, slash not allegedly, because it really happened. Our neighbor upstairs has definitely been, I think the neighbor has changed in the last month or so, but in the last few months, we had a person above us who was incredibly loud, like, in the whole neighborhood. They would speak really loudly, Oh my gosh, I, I don't know if I should say the story, but let's just say, allegedly, <laughs> I woke up in the middle of the night hearing my neighbor basically like yelling, talking to somebody, and I was recording it because we were starting to record these scenarios to kind of maybe go to the HOA and like maybe if we needed to f file a formal complaint of all, allegedly, we would do that. But we, we've been pretty lax about it because we wanted to not confront this person based on the activity. We just didn't feel like it was a safe option. So I'm just recording in bed. It's one in the morning. It's a Sunday night. So everyone goes to work for the mo most part around here on Mondays in our neighborhood. And we have a lot of families and kids, so everyone's in bed pretty early. No one's up partying. It's not like a college town or anything. So everyone's pretty quiet. And so when someone in the neighborhood is like really loud, it's very apparent. And I woke up to the noise and I was like, oh, here we go again. And I went over to this window to see what was going on because it sounded like they were outside. And so, yeah, I peeked out the window and right in front of me, in my line of sight, was a police officer who looked like he was in military uniform. Like, I don't know what kind of police officer this was, but it was like, he was in gear. And I was shocked. I was stunned. I like, didn't know how to react, and they're, like, right outside. I'm definitely, like, what's going on? And it turns out that the officer person was talking to my neighbor, allegedly. They were having some kind of altercation, more like a conversation, not like any physical things. And I couldn't make out what they were saying, but... In summary, it was like the officer asked the neighbor to come with them or to kind of like, you know, wrap up this conversation and move on to what the officer was intending to do. And then since then, allegedly, <laughs> the neighbor has not come back or perhaps they've changed their ways, but there's no more stop. There's no more yelling like this person would yell. And it was just jarring. We've never had that in our neighbor pod before. And it was kind of scary because we didn't feel like we could go upstairs and be like, hey, you know, your music is loud or, you know, it's like two in the morning on a Sunday. Maybe don't have 
a really loud phone call with your windows open, um, maybe that's not the time or place, but we just weren't getting vibes that we should do that. And I'm glad. Um, it sounds like someone else called this law enforcement, allegedly. <laughs> we didn't do it. Um, we, we have not done that. But I do feel like when it comes to neighborhood safety, sometimes it's your own neighbors that can cause the, the ruckus. Um, anyway, so I'm gonna end with face stuff with my Aquaphor Healing Ointment for Chapstick. And I love this. It is so healing. There's just been so many noises during this video, like air conditioning and the crickets and the helicopter that's chasing someone. And <laughs> I don't know. I don't know if this is relaxing at all, so my apologies if it's not. So next, um, I'm gonna just take out my hair and brush it and, um, yeah, I have some bobby pins in here. It's kind of like one of those scenarios where I just shove a bunch <laughs> and hope that it doesn't show. I think for the most part it watching a lot of good shows lately and it's just been really great. I feel like I've had a lot of content to enjoy. Um, so my hair is <laughs> like that. I'm gonna go through it with a comb first. So I'm gonna do that. But yeah, we've been watching Better Call Saul, which has been phenomenal. We had stopped watching it after like season three and forgot to rewatch it or catch up with it. So we are now on season five. It's been really good, like really good. Um, we've watched Cherry Duty on Freebie Amazon. That show is so good. I love Cherry Duty. It's just so reminiscent of The Office and so wholesome. It's honestly one of my favorite shows we've watched and all the characters, actors, because um, it's about a person thinking they're in a documentary and then everyone else is like an actor essentially. Um, and it's just hilarious. So funny. And the characters are so likable. So, um, yeah. I just, I've been really enjoying my books lately and shows we've been watching. There was a rough patch for a little while where we were watching things and I was just either really anxious watching them or it just felt like it wasn't wasn't like likable in certain aspects. Um, it's really funny because we watched the la the, you know, the most recent season of Outer Banks. <laughs> if you've watched that, um, John B's, uh, you know, situation in that <laughs> show, um, 
was, I feel like every episode we were kind of like busting up because we were like, why is this happening? <laughs> so it was like enjoyable, but in a different way. Um, I don't know. So I'm just going to like go through the top of my head. And uh, I don't know why, but my hair has been kind of frizzy today. It's not naturally wavy. I did curl it today, so. Well, the curls are like not there anymore. But I'm going to brush with a paddle brush kind of thing. And I put like some hair waxy stuff on my bangs, so they're kind of greasier. I'll probably have to wear a slicked back look tomorrow because um, I don't really need to wash my hair yet. So I will probably do that. Usually I put my hair up in like a top ponytail or bun, loose bun, with like a silky scrunchie. Um, but I think I'm just gonna do a bun behind my head for like the rest of the video. But I wouldn't sleep like is what I want to preface, okay? <laughs> so, um, I would love to now show you the books that I've been into lately. Okay. So, I've been really trying to read before bed. Um, read more in general. So, I just wanted to share what's on my read list. I do have two other books I'm still kind of reading, but I thought I would just share my most recent reads, if you will. I finished The Seven Husbands of Evelyn Hugo not too long ago. I loved this book so much. I think it's probably one of the best books I've ever read. It completely just sucks you into the characters. Um, I feel like the twist at the end was not very surprising to me. I wasn't like, oh my gosh, I'm shocked. I wasn't like very shocked. It just wasn't like a huge twist to me. I think what was most emotionally tugging were the relationships Evelyn had and the, the ones she formed over time and her true love, if you will. I was just so, I don't know, I feel like it really captured in I guess like a very dramatic way because um, not everyone's a Hollywood star. Um, it just really captured the human experience and how we live our lives and what matters most, which is our deep love for people and sort of how that really can affect your happiness in life and the choices you make. Um, I think I just really understand that because my husband, for example, I, it's like my person and it's exciting to think about our lives together, but it's also really scary th 
thinking about losing someone. Um, but yeah, it's just, this book was beautiful. It was beautiful. I loved every minute and I'm keeping it forever. Yeah. So, that is by Taylor Jenkins Reid. Jenkins or Jenkins? to a lighter piece of content uh, book. This is a spicy book, so if you don't like that, I don't recommend it, but I do not mind it. Um, this book, so far, I'm only 50% of the way we've read through, and it's about, um, girl who's a figure skater in college and sort of her meat cute but not so cute like it's not very cute meat if that makes sense they're both cute but the meeting was a little dicey if that makes sense um he's a hockey player clearly um and i'm not a huge sports person but I find this really enjoyable to read. Just their dynamics and I, the characters are so likable, even though they have their flaws. Everyone's so likable, like every character. And the writing is so funny too. Like I've been laughing at some of the dialogue and it's just, I wish I could capture humor that way in my writing someday, but this is pleasantly funny and endearing characters in the midst of all the spice. I think the spice is like an added benefit. It's definitely like a driver of the characters too, but it's there's so much more to the characters that I appreciate that makes sense. It's not just like, you know, 100% romance all the time. Um, so I definitely enjoy it. I'm about halfway through. It's a pretty chunky book, but I feel like the text is big. So I don't think it's like that long. Um, I've made some headway I really have been enjoying this. I don't know what's to come though, so I'm only halfway through, but so far I am enjoying everything. We will see if that changes, but I've been enjoying it. When I finished Evelyn Hugo, the book by Taylor, I got the other books from that author that I've been interested in and I haven't read yet. So I got Malibu Rising. I've heard different opinions on this, but nothing spoiler to me, so I'm interested in reading this and having it be just kind of like a light read. Well, I don't know how light it will be, but like a quick read, if that makes sense. Um, and I got it from Target. <laughs> I actually got these, like, I think I got this for like 10 bucks. It was very inexpensive. And I like the writing from this author, so I figured I would enjoy this as well. So. I am excited to read that. Then I picked up the another book by the same author, Taylor, Daisy Jones and the Six. I specifically wanted this cover. And I have seen the series, um, so I already kind of know what happens, but I also know the book is slightly different. And I feel like this author does a really great character development that is not something you can always translate in a movie. Um, so I'm hoping that watching the movie, I'm sorry, the series, the TV, well, it's like an episodic movie, honestly. 
hoping by having seen that already, I haven't really ruined it for myself by reading this, but I have high hopes and also want to keep my realities in check. <laughs> but yeah, I'm excited to read this and I think I'll enjoy it. I swore that I was not going to buy any more books because I still have some books that I haven't read that I've bought but I just couldn't help but pick some of these up so these last two books from Taylor Jenkins read I um, recently bought and I shouldn't have but I did and I also got this book I heard really good things about this book so I immediately was like putting it on my list it's a big boy it's a big I got the hardcover because it was cheap I like it. I think it's very, like, bookish. Like, it's my book, you know? So, it's Tomorrow and Tomorrow and Tomorrow by Gabri Gabrielle Seven. Um, so, it's basically a romance, but it's not really. I think it's not like that's not the bulk of the content, but it is about a relationship and once again I heard it was really good so and like had really good writing um, and so I felt I should pick it up and just, just looks like a proper book <laughs> like I got this at the library so I am so excited to read this um, we'll see if I can get to it just seem to have so many books to read. So, um, yeah, this book I don't have a ton of information on, so I am walking into it, like, without a lot of context. Um, so yeah. Anyways, those are the books that I'm reading, and I'm really excited. Um, but yeah, that kind of concludes my Get Unready With Me. I hope it was enjoyable the most part, um, and I am excited to continue reading, and I hope that you have a lovely day or night or moment, wherever you are, and I look forward to seeing you in the next video. Thanks for spending time with me. I appreciate it. Okay. I'll see you later.